So what happens to two-point perspective when you want to add a more up or down tilt of the camera? The remaining parallel dimension will need to recede somewhere, and this is when the introduction of a third vanishing point comes into play. In three-point perspective, no lines of your scene will be drawn parallel anymore. And the explanation of what to do is really quite simple. All details from each visible side of an object will recede toward a vanishing point. Done deal! Except you're probably wondering, what's up with that third vanishing point? It doesn't seem to follow the rules of the other two. Well, I suppose it does require some explanation. As you can see, in three-point perspective, the third vanishing point is never placed on the horizon line along with the other two. It will be placed either far above the horizon line when your point of view is tilted up, or far below when it's tilted down, and almost never located within the picture plane. In most circumstances, the third vanishing point will exist evenly between the two points on the horizon line. Remember that compass I showed you in the last video? How the vanishing points we see in two-point perspective are like the coordinates for north, west, east, and south? If we were to look at this compass from an angle, you'll find that the third vanishing point's located either directly above or directly below your head in the center. If we look straight forward, the third vanishing point is exactly 90 degrees to the top of our head and forms parallel orthogonals as a result, causing the scene to revert back to two-point perspective. If we look up or down, however, that third vanishing point is no longer perpendicular to the top of our head, and we can begin to see its influence on the scene. Looking up or down even slightly will cause vertical recession of depth to some degree. The farther you look, the closer the third vanishing point gets to the picture plane, and thus creates steeper recession of depth. And yes, if you look up or down far enough so that the third vanishing point reaches the center of your picture plane, you got it, the scene reverts all the way back to one point perspective again. Shifting the third vanishing point to the right or left can have a drastic effect on your scene, but could be a desirable one. Shifting the point changes where the straight up-down orthogonal lies in your scene, refocusing the area where all other details in your scene recede toward. Doing this can really change the feel of your image, causing distortion that could either be a little awkward or really dramatic. Experiment to see for yourself. Most three-point perspective artworks you'll find largely have a point of view that just looks forward with a hint of a tilt up or down. This slight vertical recession gives a little more visual characteristic to the image rather than defaulting to parallel verticals with two-point. It takes a little more work, but the end result can be striking, and make the environment feel just that little bit more realistic. It can become a pain to map such shallow orthogonals to the vanishing points when they're so far away, so you may want to practice guessing the third set of orthogonals, which can really save time and trouble. Just as long as they fan out in a consistent manner, you should be good to go. For more dynamic and dramatic points of view, though, Mapping out the vanishing point and its orthogonals is definitely a good idea. Dynamic angles like this is really what three-point is best used for, since the effect it can create is so pronounced. Just remember not to go overboard with crazy angles all the time in your artworks. What may seem like a more impressive option can become gimmicky if it dominates your portfolio. So, now that we've gone over basic terminology, one point, two point, and three point perspective, that concludes the first half of this Skillshare class, but we're far from done here. In the next unit, we're going to be going over things like atmosphere, color, and scale, and how their implementation can really push your perspective even further. In the meantime, I recommend going and practicing on what you've learned so far. A major part of learning, especially in art, is doing. Feel free to share any practice drawings you've done in your project, and as always, feel free to ask any questions and I'll be happy to get to them. I'll see you in part three.